guys, Matt from Eastwood. We are here working on my crusty and now not so crusty Cushman project. So the last time we worked on getting the left side running board uh, pretty much all fixed and repaired. And that was the last major part of rot on the whole scooter, I think. Fingers crossed, I'm hoping. So uh, now we can kind of work on some of the more fun stuff. My goal with this project, we took a little break over the winter where I was kind of gathering ideas and figuring out what I was doing for some parts and things like that. Um, I decided I think it would be best to kind of get the scooter put together and working in bare metal or in primer before we start doing body work or anything like that in case we have to change some stuff because I never built one of these and who knows what's going to work with bagging a uh, Cushman scooter. So um, what we're going to work on is, is the rear suspension. We kind of hinted in a few episodes ago how I wanted to bag the, uh, the Cushman just because I thought it would be cool uh, and it'll look awesome when it's sitting all slammed in the parking lot. Um, and it's kind of a fun little project. So I found these little tiny baby airbags that are actually meant for the air ride seats on semi trucks. And I thought they work pretty well. They have plenty of weight capacity. They, this is the full extension here that you see. Um, they actually shrink down when they're compressed to like half or less of the height. So it will give us plenty of travel on this um, to really let us get it to sit how we want. So I'm gonna work on today trying to utilize the original brackets, but maybe modify them or change some stuff and get these airbags uh, at least mocked up so we can figure out how we're gonna mount them. Um, and then we can kind of uh, start building off of it from there. But I wanna make sure that these bags I bought uh, are actually gonna work and I didn't waste the money buying these. So we'll see what happens. So what's pretty cool with the, uh, the suspension on this is it just has like a single hoop uh, swing arm on the back that holds the, uh, the rear wheel and the suspension in place. So we can get this mounted up. Um, this just swings like that. And then the, the rear springs, the coil springs basically sat between this lower bracket here and this upper one, uh, which is pretty uh, obviously as simple as it gets. So I'm hoping if we can get the airbag to fit between there, uh, we can get it to sit up in. It's uh, the lower bracket I think is a little too small. We have to make something bigger. But this top one actually, I think might be okay. We can just drill the hole out for the size of the top mounting hole, but we'll see. So we can get this mounted back in place. I kept the old original hardware just for now. We'll be doing new stuff when we get further along. All right, so I got the rear wheel attached and the rear swing arm uh, all bolted up. Back in place, I'm just using some jack stands to kind of hold everything up. So this is roughly where I think the suspension all the way down should be. Uh, when it's all the way up, we want it to be tucked up pretty good. It was basically like touching the inside of the body. Um, so we'll probably test mount the body here in a second. But what I wanted to show you guys was I took some rough measurements before I ordered these um, and it seems to be think they will be okay. So um, I'm just doing a quick, so they obviously compress and I'm just checking the, the height and everything, how they can mount in there. But you can see, now that I have everything kind of locked in, I think, so these, if this was all the way up at like raised all the way up, they're barely compressed at all. They're, um, they're, they're almost at full extension, which is great. Uh, we also don't want to constantly overextend them. So then when we raise the suspension up, it should basically compress these like that. Uh, obviously they'll be sitting in the center of the bracket, but I wanted to kind of demonstrate what my idea was here for these. So um, I looks like once these are pushed out, um, we will be really close to them fitting without too much modification. Only thing I'm worried about is in here on these brackets, we might be a little close to the bag. We don't want it to be rubbing and over time to rub a hole in the bag. So we may need to clearance this or put a little bow in this bracket just to give some shape to it. Um, we could sand out the inside and brace the outside area of it, or we could just make a whole new bag mount, but trying to sort of utilize some of the original parts. I just think it would be neat to kind of utilize as much original bracketry as we could and just modify it a little bit, but we will see. So um, what I'm gonna do is test fit the body just to kind of see, get a fact check of where it really does sit. Um, and then we can kind of figure out what our ride height, where it needs to sit exactly for the spacing here. 
um, but I'm glad to see that the bags fit pretty good um, just once we move them out. So one of the first things I may do actually is drill these holes out on top to get the bag so it can mount up in these top brackets and get that locked in. All right, so uh, not a lot seemed to have got done, but it was a lot of work uh, trying to figure everything out, figure out the clearance. So what you saw in, throughout the video was um, I ended up getting rid of the original spring brackets. Uh, they were a little on the thin side, I thought, um, and I noticed that they were tweaked a little bit over the years, probably because they were a little on the thin side from the design. Um, I think they were quarter inch. So I ended up going up to, I found some half inch um, by two or two and a half inch wide pleat. Uh, that I had and I tried bending it and I know it's overkill. The, the Eastwood uh, press brake is only rated to 3 8 uh, by 3 inch wide is the maximum capacity. I tried bending it in my uh, press brake and actually the uh, press brake itself was, was actually up to the task I think but I have an old school screw press and I just didn't have the strength of the handle I had on it. Uh, I wasn't going to get it bent uh, in any um, short fashion. So I ended up firing up the rosebud on the oxyacetylene torch, heated it up, bent it over, uh, just kind of the old school way to do this stuff, which is kind of fun sometimes. Um, and I made those brackets up. I think they're plenty strong, but I probably will put some webbing in the corners just to be extra safe. Um, and uh, I drilled the hole in there to get the bag to actually mount up and kind of seat in there. Uh, also what I ended up doing was sliding the swing arm forward as much as I could to try and give myself enough room in front of the bag. I think there's enough room I can actually get my hand in between the bag and the tire. Uh, there's probably more than that in the rear uh, around the body. So I think it should be totally fine uh, as the bag goes up and down and you know when it collapses it's going to expand the diameter and also when you air it up it's also going to expand a little bit as well. So we want to make sure we have plenty of room in there. Uh, but being able to shove my whole hand in between uh, the tire, I think it'll be totally fine. Uh, but of course, I'm going to leave everything tacked up like I have it to make sure that um, I don't have to change anything. Now, the, the lower brackets I'm going to have to make next, uh, and I'm going to have to make some kind of riser on them so we can get an air fitting in the bottom if we need to. Um, so I'm going to work on that probably next time. Uh, but right now it seems to be sitting pretty good with how I set that top bracket. That was the important part of where that sat because that's going to set the ride height and also you know how far we can collapse the rear tire um, with the airbags. So I think right now I have I have it blocked up on the table but after subtracting the blocks I think we have around like seven or eight inches of uh, of ride height in the back uh, when it's going to be aired up. Basically right now I have it as if it was aired up and extended all the way and that means we can drop it down. I think these bags have like six inches or so of 
drop to them, six or seven inches. So that's gonna drop us back down and we'll basically put this rear sheet metal on the ground, which I think will look really cool when the thing's parked in a parking lot. It'll be kind of ridiculous and awesome. So small little update on this, but uh, it's nice to be doing some custom work on this thing and not fixing giant rot holes in the body and the frames. So thank you guys for following along on the Cushman build. Hopefully you guys enjoy these uh, quick little updates and this kind of down and dirty uh, basic fun little project like this. Uh, stuff like this is a nice change from doing full car builds that can take years upon years to build. This is something we can just tinker with in between on a, on a weekend or, or an evening and uh, get something done. Thanks guys. Catch you later.